When we first meet Rusty, um, he's now uh, Ed Helms. He's a grown man, and he's married with two sons. And um, his marriage feels like it's in a little bit of a rut, and his relationship to his sons feels like it's not quite where he wants it to be. And so there's clearly some issues that he's dealing with. He's a pilot on a regional airline called Econo Air, not the sexiest in the world, but uh, he, uh, he enjoys the work. Rusty decides that uh, the only way to sort of remedy the problem that his family is facing is to take them on the same road trip that he went on 30 years ago with his family uh, to Wally World. He sort of has a case of selective memory here where he's blocked out somehow all the terrible things that happened on that trip and only remembers the family bonding that came out of it in his mind. And he thinks if he can replicate that, all will be well with the Griswold family. The good thing about um, the character of Rusty uh, being kind of ill-defined and played by four different actors over the years is that it was a bit of a blank slate. We had the family history, but we could make him as an adult into whatever worked best. And yeah. That's kind of how we went with it. As was the dynamic between Rusty and Audrey mm -hmm. as well, because I feel like it shifts throughout each of the movies. And so that was fun to be able to find a new dynamic between them uh, that's kind of fresh and, and also, you know, a nod to the original. We always try to write to some extent to our actor, if we can, and I think Ed so perfectly personified the, the well-meaning, uh, somewhat innocent dad who, um, who finds himself, you know, going down creek, so to speak. Um, and, and so I think he, he brought a lot to the role. We also kind of tried to imbue him with some of those Clark Griswold characteristics, um, that dogged optimism and like the, the strength, you know, that we're going to get through this and it's going to be great. Um, I think there's differences too, though. Debbie is obviously Rusty's wife and is um, uh, sort of frustrated with where their marriage has gone. He's taken them to the same cabin in Sheboygan every year for vacation, and she wants to go somewhere glamorous like Paris or something, you know, uh, a little nicer than a crappy cabin in the woods. Um, and we she's also We also learn about halfway through the movie that there's this whole side of Debbie that the audience and Rusty never knew about, which is kind of a right. big revelation that she's this, um, she was this kind of uh, party girl. And that, inf that becomes very um, sort of informative for where, where the relationship goes from there. The funniest <laughs> actress. She's so damn good. She, she, we would throw her lines and she'd make everything work. Uh, she, she just brings it. She just brings it on the day so much. It's amazing. So like she's so committed good. to it. She had to do this chug run thing where she's falling all over the place and, she just, and, and the hot springs, which weren't that hot. And, um, you know, just a lot of discomfort they had to go through on this, the filming of this movie. And she was just so great, and it was so much fun to, to get to work. It was a dream come true to have them in the film. And honestly, I don't know if we would have done it if, if Chevy and Beverly weren't involved. It feels like the only way to sort of pay our respects to the original and, uh, and keep the Griswold family alive and legitimate. Because without them, it's, it's a spinoff. It's not... It's not a vacation movie. And it was such an incredible blast to be able to work with them. I mean, I, I was fanboying the entire time while we were trying to direct and, and be the uh, you know responsible uh, taskmasters. But it was, it was tough to, because a lot of the times, you know, you sort of step back and see how incredible of an experience it is and, and just, you know, the, that we're part of uh, what yeah. is movie history. Chris Hemsworth was uh, someone that was pitched to us by New Line, and they saw all this comedic potential in him. And I saw it to a certain degree in Thor, and he, you know, he's he's very naturally funny. But this was a this was a different role. It was a different animal. So we weren't totally sure how it would all. You know, Sometimes play. you get you get a dramatic actor. They show up on, on a comedy and they push too hard and it's sticky and it becomes it kind of hurts the material. It was the exact opposite. Yeah, I mean, no, he he couldn't have been funnier and better and 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 he plays just like this handsome, confident guy who he is. <laughs> uh, but the character's kind of a dick and he couldn't be nicer. 
but and a Texan, and he got a dialect coach. He took it so seriously that he, you know, to turn his Australian yeah. accent into a Texas. He one, treated right? it. He treated it like a dramatic role. Yeah. I mean, I th he delivered all the lines as though he were doing it in a drama. Uh, except he has this giant dick that's dangling from his boxers. <laughs> Over the course of the movie, the two of them start to feel like a real couple, and with the kids, it starts to feel like a real family over the, the shooting of it. She was very protective of those two kids, um, and they spent so much time together in that car, whether it was on a real road or on the stage, and you know, inevitably, they sort of fall into the mom and dad roles. You know, y you don't want to think about it too much or else you'll just get in your, your own head and you'll start second guessing every decision that you make to, to revamp it. But um, it's, also, it's also good at, and it, it sets the bar real high for us because we, we want to do um, the Griswold family justice with this movie and we also want to make it our own. And I think that we've successfully managed to find a, a healthy medium. We set out, I mean, when we started, we said, okay, this has to work for people who know and love the original and for those under, say, 30 who may not even know about the original. And we kind of allude to that in that opening scene where Rusty and the kids are talking. The kid says, I've never even heard of the original vacation. Um, yeah. We, it had to stand on its own, and it had to be its own thing um, while still being respectful to what everybody loves in the original. And so we tried to balance all of those things. Probably the biggest challenge in the whole movie was was figuring out what the hell this car was going to be. And because ultimately, <laughs> yeah, ultimately it was a it was a Toyota Previa that we redesigned all the panels on and everything. We thought what would be funny is a car that's essentially symmetrical front and back. So when you see it driving away, it still looks like it's driving towards you. Um, and then we equipped it with the stupidest features in the world. You know, buttons that make no sense. You push one and the bumper falls off. Um, and uh, but maybe they make sense in Albania. Because yeah. it's an Albanian car, it's a Tartan Prancer, and maybe in Albania there's a there's a reason why you need your your rear bumper to fall off 